doing well today's topic i want to go over what pace do i need to run a 220 marathon this is another recent question i was asked and anybody that's trying to run this fast really in my opinion probably has a great deal of either genetic talent or has many many years of hard work put in in order to run a time this quick i mean you're you're seeking to run an average of five minutes and 20 seconds per mile for 26.2 miles or around three minutes and 19 seconds per kilometer for 42.2 kilometers. So there's there's nothing easy about this particular goal. It is achievable. I broke the two hour and 20 minute, two hour and 20 minute marathon barrier one time in my career. It took me from running from 1992 to 2007 to run to 1935. So I can only speak of my own background and, and some of the things that work for me. I hope it, it will help you as well. Um, without a doubt, changing up the way I was doing my long runs is how I was able to, to maintain that particular pace. When I ran 219.35, I held 519 per mile and 318 per kilometer for the entire distance. I was fourth place. I finished fourth place and top American at the 2007 California International Marathon, which of all types of marathons, if you're going to go after a sub 220 marathon, I would advise going to Berlin, London, or Chicago if you get the right conditions because the California International Marathon, much like the Boston Marathon, even though it is a net, net downhill course, there are a lot of hills on those particular courses. So you have to be well trained in terms of your preparation, in terms of racing over hills and running over up and down hills and a lot of flat sections. Um, if you're wanting to break two hours and 20 minutes, you have to make sure that you are stressing the anaerobic systems of your body adequately and enough during the week. Um, this is not a time barrier that's going to be achieved probably in a matter of a few months. Um, I know a lot of you out there really want to run uh, faster and you need to be able to gauge uh, the intensity of your running in the first half of this race in order to break two hours and 20 minutes. I would highly advise you run a negative split rather than running a positive split. Um, yes, it still can be done. You can break a 220 marathon doing a positive split. When I broke 220, I, I went out the first half at 107.09, came back with a 112.26. But looking back, I don't know if I would have if I would have went out in 112.26. I don't know if I would have been able to run a 107.09 for the second half. So sometimes you just have to really be um, prepared mentally and physically and properly tapered down to run a sub-220 marathon. Um, again, you have to make sure that you're getting to a point where you can do mile repeats on the track. Uh, the things that I was doing was five to six one-mile repetitions. I was, out, I was living in Colorado Springs um, training at 6,000 feet when I broke the 220 marathon barrier myself. But I was doing my mile repeats. Um, anywhere from around 442 to 445 per rep with anywhere from one minute to three minutes of a recovery depending on my fitness. When I wasn't as anaerobically fit, I would give myself much more time in between those reps. It would be around three minutes. And then when I was very fit, I was really working on uh, giving myself only 60 seconds between each one mile repetition. And that's the workout I did um, only a few days before, about two weeks before, uh, the 2007 California International Marathon. I did six one-mile reps, averaging around 442 to 444, uh, with 60 seconds rest in between each one. I was also doing uh, three two-mile repetitions on the track, under 10 minutes each. Um, my best was 950, 952, and a 1001. So it was an average of sub 10 per rep, with four minutes of recovery in between each one of those reps. So again. When you're training and preparing for a sub-220 marathon, you want to get to a point where your repetitions are getting much, much faster. And in this case, you want to be well below five-minute mile pace if you're doing VO2 max workouts. Um, if you're doing tempo runs, getting those tempo runs uh, anywhere from around 520 to 535 per rep, uh, per mile rep as you're running and, and lengthening out the distance of your, your tempo runs as well. If you're doing a four to five mile tempo run and you're training to break the 220 marathon barrier, that in my opinion is too short. Okay. When I was preparing for 
uh, to break what my long-term goal was, which was two hours and 22 minutes flat, 525 mile pace. Back in 2007, it was a USA Track and Field Olympic Trials B standard time. So I wanted to at least get two hours and 22 minutes flat. So I would do my temple runs anywhere from around 8 to 12 miles in length. And there were times where I'd be running 5 teens, 520s, 530s, 540s, a mixture of, of those types of intensities um, as I was preparing for my marathon. Uh, I'm a big believer in faster, varied pace long runs and not running fast every single weekend. You want to make sure that you always alternate a faster long run followed the next week by a relaxed, easy jog long run. Um, that is absolutely essential if you want to go into the 220 marathon barrier. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay, um, If you're running 80 to 90% of your weekly volume too aerobically, you're not preparing yourself to teach the body to clear lactic acid faster than it's building up. So a sub-220 marathon is really, in my opinion, uh, an extremely competitive time, even for the top elite distance runners in the world, they would still have to go out and have to at least put a little bit of effort. Um, you know, Ilya Kipchoge, he's run 159, you know, a 219 for, or, or a 220 marathon for even for him might be a, a moderately tempo effort, but he would still have to work for it. In my opinion, an elite marathon time is really anything under three hours for the marathon. Um, and again, a lead is going to be different for every individual, but there are so few athletes that break the three-hour marathon barrier around the world. Um, I just consider it one of you know an elite time because there is out of all those athletes out there that are training preparing for their races, there's such a small percentage that do break the three-hour marathon barrier, let alone the 220 marathon barrier. Um, but those are some of the things I really want you thinking about. Um, definitely start practicing your hydration. Start drinking more in your long runs. Start taking in and practicing not only your hydration, but also taking in um, those gels during your long runs. Even if it's three or four, just to test out how your body feels and how your stomach feels. You don't want to make the mistake of trying to find out how much you can hydrate and how much gels you can take in the race itself. You want to make the mistakes in training. You want to make sure that the training itself is the most difficult part of your preparation. And another and key important thing if you're going after a sub 220 is you have to learn how to relax and you have to learn how not to be so uptight and tense. Okay. If you're, you got to trust your training, you have to trust and, and be motivated with what you've done in training, preparing for this particular time. But I've seen a lot of athletes and myself included earlier on in my career, I was way too uptight. I was way too stressed out. Um, even though I was well prepared, um, in my early uh, first few marathons prior to running the morning of this the 2007 California National Marathon I was totally relaxed um, I had just come off a, a couple months prior to that running a, a 50 54 10 mile best a 107 06 half marathon so I knew I was ready to do it but the morning of that race the fastest marathon time I had run was two hours 40 minutes and two seconds okay so I knew I was capable of that time, and that's what you have to be as well. You have to trust what you're doing in training, and if you've run those types of competitive times going in, then you you definitely have the capability to do it. But even the most well-trained athlete, even athletes that are have dropped you know sub 15 minute 5k times, sub 30 minute 10k times, you know 105, 107 range half marathon times still have a difficult time running a sub-220 marathon. So sometimes you can do everything everything right in terms of your your track workouts, your tempo runs, your long runs, uh, getting proper rest. Sometimes you can do everything right and, and still not break this particular barrier. If you're trained well, if you've run, if you're training well below five minute mile pace, if you're lengthening out the, the distance you're training at your tempo runs, if you're doing a 10 day taper, Rather than a three-week taper, if you're mixing up the, the paces of your long runs and not just running long, slow, and easy every single weekend, your chances of running a sub-220 marathon are going to go much higher, okay? But you have to continue to work on your leg speed, continue to um, focus on getting that 5K, 10K, 10-mile 10 time, half-marathon time as fast as you possibly can get it. 
that will definitely help you want to obviously continue to work on your speed development and the faster you can run in those shorter races the better prepared you're going to be to run a sub 220 marathon so i hope this is helpful for you feel free to leave me a comment below uh, i will definitely reach back out to you and respond like and share these videos i definitely appreciate that it helps the channel grow and more athletes around the world to see these videos and if you're new to the channel hit that bell icon in the bell uh, in the subscribe button so when i make new videos you'll be notified of it and i wish you all the best and i'll talk to you all in the next